Hi there guys, so a few of the videos that I've been putting up over the last four or five weeks now, they've all been kind of additions to your existing images, ways to make your images better. But what happens if you want to get an image from scratch? How do you get it from an MTSD card to playing games in no time at all? Well, you can do it in less than 20 minutes, so I'm going to show you how to do it. And you only need a couple of things. First of all, you need our old favourite Win32 disk imager again. You need that open uh, to be able to write the images. And you also need to be able to go and get the actual RetroPie itself. Now that's dead simple. You've got to go to www.retropie.org.uk And this is the website where RetroPie is, uh, well it's where it lives and, and where all the information, everything you would need about RetroPie is based. So, to take a wild guess, yep, we're going to go to the download section and depending on what type of Raspberry Pi that you've got, this is where you're going to download. Now, for this example, I've got a Raspberry Pi 3B+, Plus, so I'm going to be downloading the image for there. If you've got a 0 or 1 or a Raspberry 4, you need to download one of these two images. But once you've done that, it's actually the same, so it doesn't make any difference. Just make sure you download the correct image for your file. So I'm going to download the Raspberry Pi 2 slash 3. I'm going to give that a little bit to download and we'll come back when it's done. So once that's downloaded, it takes some time because it is a pretty big file. You will see I have got it here on my desktop zipped. First thing you need to do is obviously unzip it. So right click, extract here. And it'll extract the file, the image file, to wherever you're going to do because we need that image file. So we'll just let that crack on. And there we go, we have got the image all saved onto our desktop. We can get rid of the original uh, zip file now, we don't need that. And it's gone. Right, so, we've got the image file, we need to get that onto an SD card. So we're going to put into insert into the computer our, our blank SD card. Uh, pop that into there like that and wait for it to register. There we go. And then wait till it comes up with the usual errors of this has not been installed and blah blah blah. I can just shut all that down and we're going to open up Win32 Disk Imager. Now, once this is opened up, we need to point to where the image is so we're on the desktop. desktop and there we go RetroPie Buster 4.6 double click that that'll load it into there I want to make sure it's going to create this to the correct device so it knows we've only got the uh, the SD card in drive here so that's in there none and we are going to write it from the image file to the device now we'll delete everything on the device it will format it and put in the into the correct uh, version that it needs to so once we click this button and I'm going to fast forward it because it's a 16 gig image, so watch this space. So when you get this message up guys, it says that the write has been successful. So this means whatever image you've downloaded, in this instance it's a, it's a nice blank uh, retro pie, then it's on your SD card so the next step is to go over to the Raspberry Pi that you've got there fire it up and we'll see what happens next so we've come back over now to the uh, arcade machine that I've got in Raspberry Pi in I've put the SD card in so we're going to switch it on now and let's see what happens So the first time you switch it on, it does take a little bit of time to uh, to reboot itself as configuring all the systems and everything like that, but we'll see what happens. So 
So you see that takes a little bit normal, uh, a little bit longer than your normal startup because it's just reconfiguring a load of systems because it's a brand new system. So I've got my two arcade sticks uh, configured on here. So you just do the normal configuration to set your sticks up. So I'm going to set up the one of the sticks. That's all we need at the moment. So press a button to configure it. And let's go into the configuration. Up, down, left, right. Start, select. A, B, X, Y, L, and R. And I don't have these ones in. And then the hotkey enable button, I just use my select button. And OK. So it's a very empty Virgin Retro Pie system. <laughs> I said Virgin. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so there's nothing in there guys but you do need to be in this system with a keyboard connected to be able to set it up onto your internet to be able to set it up onto your network you've got to activate ssh to be able to dial into it using putty or something else like that on your system so i'm going to show you how to do that now so i've got my keyboard plugged in as well so we're going to go into retro pi configuration we're going to go down first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to wi-fi It says we currently don't have the Wi-Fi country set, which is right because we haven't done anything to it. So we're going to go and press yes. Now we need to go down uh, to change the localization options, which is number four. So we're going to press enter in that. We're going to change the Wi-Fi country. And I'm going to select that. Now, obviously, I'm in the UK. You can tell by my uh, fantastic accent that I've got. So I'm going to scroll all the way down to UK. Uh, where were we? Uh missed it ah see school by it's not uk under it's a gb for great britain there we are school by error school by error great britain enter and the wi-fi country is now set to gb then if we finish out of that then we now got the options there to be able to connect to the wi-fi network so we're going to set the wi-fi network there And it's going to ask us which uh, which Wi-Fi system we want to connect to. So obviously I'm going to connect to mine. And then I'm going to put the Wi-Fi password in. And press enter. Give it a second to think about it. And there we go. We're connected. You can tell we're connected because we've got the current IP address at the top. 192.168.0.125. So if we go into exit now because we've connected and you can tell if it's worked because if you go up to show IP in this menu, there you go, it says at the top of the screen 192.168.0.125. Fantastic. So we're connected to the internet, we're connected to the network, which is what we need. One of the other things that we need to do as well now is also access, uh, is also set up SSH, which means we can get into the system using putty, uh, using the other uh, systems that we use to be able to dial into the root of the actual Raspberry. So to do that, we're going to go into Raspberry Config. We're going to go into Interfacing Options, number five. We're going to go to SSH, which is number two. And we're going to say, would you like it to be enabled? Well, yes, we would actually. Press enter. SSSH server is enabled. There we go. Done. And we're going to finish. And we're going to press the V button on the button. Now, that's RetroPie all set up, ready to insert your ROM. So we're going to go back over to the computer now. And I'm going to show you what it's like when we put ROMs onto the system and how easy it is. Right, so we're back over the good old faithful computer here. So, like with every other video that we've done, to be able to access the uh, Raspberry Pi, you've got to open up a uh, Explorer page and type in backslash backslash retro pie and press enter, and it fetches you to this screen. Uh, so you've got your ROM. So we're going to the ROMs, and as you can see, there's nothing in here. They're all empty. Every single ROM's empty because obviously we've got nothing in there yet. It's a brand new system. So as you'll see up here, I've got a SNES and a NES folder up here. So if we find Super Nintendo and then drag in here 
Just a couple of Super Nintendo ROMs straight into there. And then that will transfer them over to your Raspberry Pi through the network. And then also some NES ones as well. NES. NES. Drag them into there as well. Straight in. And then come out of there. Now that's as, it's as simple as that. So them ROMs should now be over on the Arcade One Up machine. So I'm going to perform a reboot on the Arcade One Up machine. And hopefully them NES ROMs will be on there. So let's go and take a look. So here we are. Now we've come over here. We're just going to restart the system now. So I'm just going to switch it back on. And hopefully, if everything's well, then them Super Nintendo and the NES games will uh, show up in the system. So let's have a look. I'm going to do a future video on how to get rid of the... Uh, the scrolling text there and everything and have it just boot straight into RetroPie. But that's coming up soon. So there we go, we can see straight away that we've got Nintendo. So we've got the NES games in there, Nintendo World Cup and Bat vs. Space Mutants. And uh, Super Nintendo as well. Super Mario Kart and Super Mario World. So that has all worked fantastically. So we'll just load up one of the games, see if it works. Let's load up uh, one of these ones. Let's sort of Bart versus the Space Mutant and see if that works. So these are all obviously the uh, the default startup screens. But there you go. You can see the uh, the game's working right. You can probably hear the sound. I'll just turn it up a bit so you can hear it. It's Bat vs. the Space Mutants. Not one of my most favourite games, but we'll... Uh... There you go, some people do like it. So if we come out of there then, let's load up one of the Super Nintendo games and see what's, uh, see what's occurring. Super Nintendo... It's got to be Super Mario Kart. There we go. Super Mario Kart playing quite nicely on my Raspberry Pi. So that it's as simple as that, guys, to get your first few ROMs loaded up. There is some other, there is a couple of other bits that I want to show you. Starting off with the uh, the emulators. So we'll come out with this. And to do this, we have to go back into uh, RetroPie. We have to go into RetroPie setup and using the keyboard again. So, one of the biggest problems that I see on forums and message boards is, well, I've put my ROMs where they're meant to go, but they don't show up. Now, they don't show up because you haven't installed the emulator. So, to do that, you go into the RetroPie setup, you go into Manage Packages, and they're either in Main, Optional, or Experimental. So, if we go into the Optional Packages, these are all the... Uh, all the emulators here that are not set up so like the Daphne games that we talked about before if you put them into your ROM file on your system they're not going to show up because it doesn't know what to do with them because the emulator hasn't been set so it's a case of going into one of these so let's just install Daphne and just uh, in, in, install from either the pre-compiled binary or the source so I'm going to set one of them off installing and it's as simple as that we'll just let that play through and then I'll show you the next thing that I want to show you And then when it goes back to this screen, it's uh, it's been installed. So one thing to check if your ROMs aren't showing up once you've put them into the ROM file, like I showed you a little earlier, is to make sure the the, uh, the actual emulator's been installed. So we're going to go back. We're going to go back. We're going to go back, and we're going to exit it. So again, just to show you how simple it is with these things. I'm going to go back into Super Nintendo and NES. Now I'm going to go away from camera now, and I'm going to scrape these images to hopefully see if we get some of the nice videos and images that we can get with these as well. So I'm going to go and scrape them. And I'll come back when I've done that. So I've done a little bit of tinkering with the scrapers and stuff like that. And I've got it looking a little bit prettier. So if we go into the NES. Yeah, you can see we've got stuff like for the World Cup and Bat vs. the Space Bunes. The blurb and the uh, box art on there and the screenshots. And then over in the Super Nintendo. Again, we've got Super Mario All-Stars and Super Mario Kart in there as well. I am putting on the screen now a little link so you can see the video. How to do the scraping and get videos and stuff like that on it. So... Again, thanks for watching, guys. Hope this has been interesting and helpful for you. If you need any help with anything else, drop a comment in the uh, comment section below. But if not, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time 
on Noob Game Reviews.